All right, if everybody can grab a seat, we'll get started. Thank you for your patience, folks. We're a few minutes late, but uh, let me just read an opening statement so that everybody understands exactly what it is we are and are not here for. We are here for the petition of Comcast uh, Communications to uh, have the license, cable franchise license, currently assigned to Charter to be transferred to Comcast. That's the substitute here. Um, I am Kevin Pecos, the acting town manager for the town. Uh, we are now open and in session the public hearing on the June 17, 2014 cable television license transfer application of Charter Communications and Comcast Corporation. The purpose of the hearing is to hear from Charter, Comcast, and the public about the proposed transfer of the Southbridge cable license from Charter to Comcast. Before getting started, I'd like to welcome all those in attendance and welcome both Charter and Comcast. And when I'm done, I'll have you gentlemen in that for yourself. <clears throat> Under applicable law in the current license, the license cannot be transferred without the consent of the license issuing authority which is the town manager and Southbridge. Pursuant to applicable law, this hearing shall include consideration of the qualifications of the proposed transferee, Comcast, including whether Comcast has the technical, legal, financial, and management ability to assume the obligations of the proposed transfer or charter. In addition, we would like to confirm for the public and for the record that state law and the transfer application provide that Comcast must assume and comply with all of the terms, <coughs> excuse me, terms of the existing Southbridge Charter license, which is due to expire on June 26, 2021. We also want to hear generally about Comcast's commitment to community programming and public educational and governmental access. And I assume your comments will touch on that. And to maintaining adequate support for community programming and cable related needs. We want Comcast as a possible provider in Southbridge to be aware of and attentive to the importance of Southbridge Cable TV and its role at the forefront of meeting many public, town, and school cable needs. The agenda for this hearing will be as follows. First, we will invite opening statements from Comcast. Uh, Charter, I understand, may not have any comments, but Comcast does. We respectfully request that Comcast address its management, technical, financial, and legal ability to assume the obligations of Charter under the current license. Its overall commitment to local programming and public educational and government access and how operations will continue as they now are or will change. Finally, questions or comments from the licensing authority and the general public will be accepted. Before proceeding with testimony from Comcast and Charter, I note that we have entered the following document in the hearing records. Uh, license transfer application of Charter and Comcast, Federal Communications Commission Form 394 and Comcast cover letter dated June 17, 2014. The newspaper notices published twice in advance of tonight's hearing as required by Massachusetts regulations. Any questions or comments for Charter and Comcast should be directed through me and I will rule whether they are in order. The record of this hearing will be left open until further notice and members of the public or interested parties accordingly may submit written comments on this license transfer application, care of the town manager, town hall. Uh, just a <coughs> sidebar note, comments must be um, strictly on the subject of whether Comcast is an appropriate authority, appropriate licensee, rather, to assume the responsibilities of charter. It is not the case that this is an opportunity tonight to be heard regarding dissatisfaction of any nature with charters um, exercise of the license. So um, this is a very, according to federal communications regulation and federal law, and state law, 
This is a very narrowly drawn hearing. So I want to be sure everyone understands that because I'm required by law to rule out of order any sort of questions or comments that do not fit within those narrow confines. And I want to be absolutely clear on that. Um, so with that, uh, we will now commence testimony on Comcast license transfer application in Selfridge. And um, if you can identify yourself, go for the record. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Uh, my name is Frank Foss, and I am senior manager of community and regulatory relations um, in uh, for Comcast. My role at Comcast is strictly um, dealing with communities at the conduit between the community and, uh, and the company, as well as franchise negotiations and, and compliance. Um, with that, um, I tend to be the counterpart that is, uh, like Ms. Cohen, uh, who uh, deals directly with the communities. Um, I want to at least thank you uh, for the opportunity to share information about the transaction between Comcast and Charter Communications. And quite frankly, we're very excited uh, about the transaction between the two companies. Uh, we feel that we provide um, the financial, legal, technical, and managerial uh, components uh, in the Form 394, uh, which you entered into the record earlier. Uh, but there's always more that needs to be said, or at least in unveiled, and that is our involvement in a community as well as some of the benefits that we believe uh, for services and otherwise uh, that we provide to the subscribers. So I'm here to share that information about the company um, and also tell you um, some of the things that we have now in the services and will provide in the future. Um, Comcast, of course, is, is uh, strictly uh, going to step into the shoes of the operator uh, charter as it is obligated under the franchise, as you mentioned earlier, uh, that we will comply with all of the provisions that were provided in that franchise. Uh, specifically, any of the public education and government access programming, as well as funding that might be in, in that, um, we will provide services, or at least that level of uh, funding and support. We do that throughout the Commonwealth. Uh, we serve over 200 communities now, um, and in each of them, we provide different levels of support because no two communities are alike. Um, but in, the, in almost all cases, we do support PEG access. Um, what I'd like to also talk about is some of our community involvement. Uh, Comcast uh, does uh, provide the best in class technical and services, of course, including uh, deployment of some of our advanced services, um, such as what we call our X1 Entertainment um, operating system, and Comcast Video On Demand platform, which makes available 500,000 video choices on TV. So we're providing the advanced robust services um, that, um, of course, Charter does too, but we have these, these new and innovative programs that we, we would like to provide um, <coughs> Uh, as we uh, have a relationship with all of our communities, we like to consider it as being a local um, community. That is, we, we do pride in our community investment. Um, we're really committed to being a good local uh, corporate partner, um, investing in the communities that we serve. And some of the things, some of the ways that we give back um, is through local scholarships, um, such as our Leaders and Achievers program, um, which actually has provided over $630,000 in scholarships um, that are used by the children within the community. One of the other programs, and I, did, I like to call it our signature program, and we launched about four years ago, which was Internet Essentials. Um, Internet Essentials is a program that uh, uses criteria based on uh, most, most of the children that are receiving uh, national school lunch programming support um, that can actually buy internet service for a discounted price, that is $10 a month. Once they comply to that and are on the national school lunch program service, 
uh, they are on that program until they leave public schools. Or and I read some material today online yeah. uh, indicating we're expanding that program. We're actually expanding it where it will now have a free six month period providing that um, it will be uh, that the, these students would sign up during a certain entry or uh, enrollment period, as well as we're expanding it um, with its further services uh, to parochial schools um, and also non public other other non public schools. And that is available here in California if you are granted this license. Providing we're granted uh, the light, the light, you know, control of the license and the approval of the FCC and the Department of Justice. Um, yes, and that program does them. not currently exist um, uh, under charter. Charter does not have anything similar to the right. So this will be a new service. Uh, yeah. Yes. And one of the things that we had, at first we had a three-year uh, window on the program. We now have extended it indefinitely um, into whatever time because of uh, the outreach and, and actually what what really the, uh, from the Obama administration down to um, the Patrick administration here in the state, and, and also many of the, the local schools and, and officials are looking to, you know, actually bridge that divide for broadband so that everyone at least has the opportunity to get it if they wish to. Um, one of the biggest opportunities is, is affordability and availability. Um, so this bridges that, that gap. Mark, do you know, uh, off the top of your head, any rough um, guidelines for what the income uh, parameters are? I truly don't know exactly what the National Food and Lunch Program is. Could you get back um, to me with that, please? I can get you that information, or you, it, it should be available through the superintendent schools, too, but I, I do know that it's on the Mass Department of Education sure, website. I, I think it'd be great interest. In sure, I'll get you those details. <coughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt your question. That's about all right. I want to make sure I cover all the bases. Um, what we're doing, I'll, I'll close with this. Um, tonight we're requesting the transfer of control of the license. Again, we'll step into the shoes of the current um, holder of the license and control it. Um, the details of the, the purchase and sale uh, merger is in the 394. Certainly, uh, willing to answer any questions that are that you need to that might be a technical technical nature or otherwise just a general interest. Um, and we're proud that we can, we do serve the 200 or more Massachusetts communities. We have experience with uh, some of some of the things that the communities are looking for and need. Um, we're more than willing to uh, uh, take this on and uh, do a good job. For us. So we, we do ask for your consent. Idea how many Massachusetts cities and towns uh, you're in? I know you're in a large number of them. You being in me or, or Comcast? Comcast. I think it's 250. 250, yeah, 351. Yeah, something of the 350. And nationally, I believe Comcast is the largest cable provider, correct? I'm sorry? Nationally, oh. Comcast is the largest cable provider? We are. Yeah. Correct. Um, just one question, if I might. Why is Charter surrendering? Um, but I, thank you for the question. I'm, I'm Tom <laughs> Cohan, Director of Government Relations for Charter Communications. And again, it's a pleasure to be here this evening. Um, Charter has very much appreciated the opportunity to serve the residents and businesses in Southboro. Um, a lot of the people I work with have been at Charter for 25 years, which means they were the predecessor company, Greater Media. Um, so we have a long history in, in this town. Um, that said, and, and I spent a lot of time over the last several years negotiating the current, in terms of the current license with, with your predecessor in the Cable Advisory Committee, uh, your attorney Bill August, and I think we have a real good license agreement um, protecting PEG access here in South Pearl and, and letting it flourish. Um, what Charter is looking for is, is um, what, uh, actually the benefit to Charter in this transaction is that we are essentially swapping with Comcast about a million and a half customers in New England, the Southeast, and the West Coast, and in return receiving about a million and a half customers um, 
from Comcast that are currently Time Warner customers in the Midwest. Um, this, this transaction between Charter and Comcast is continuing upon uh, the approval of a Comcast Time Warner transaction as well. Uh, for any cable company, it really helps. It's cost effective to have a, a good cluster of systems. Um, we operate in 29 states today. Our New England system is our smallest uh, regional market. We have 53 cities and towns in Massachusetts. Um, and as you can see, we're, we're kind of surrounded by Comcast. Um, there are advantages to being uh, having a larger footprint than we currently have today. So what Charter will get out of this is um, a very large footprint in, if you're a football fan, the Big Ten states. Ohio, Michigan, Illinois, um, Minnesota, Wisconsin. Um, Charter will become more a Midwest cable company. Um, and with, with the, uh, the added scale there, we'll be more efficient at serving our customers in terms of the truck roll won't be as far. Um, we'll have a better leverage in dealing with the programmers because it's the programmers today is what's really driving up the cost of cable television service. Um, and as a, as a smaller operator, we're, we've been at somewhat of a disadvantage, and, and that will change. But, um, you know, we're, 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 I'm not sure that sad is the right word, but, but we don't like exiting all of New England. I'm a lifelong New Englander. Um, but uh, this is a great opportunity for Charter, um, as well as Comcast. So this is essentially <coughs> a corporate decision uh, regarding the marketing strategy and that sort of thing. Doesn't have anything yeah, it, it was the goal. To to continue service. Right? Yeah, it, it's been the goal of, of Charter to become a bigger company, and, and this this transaction allows us to do that. <coughs> um, open it up to the public for uh, questions. Sir, if you could identify yourself for the record, please. Yeah, Brett J. Crabs at 26 Franklin Terrace, Southbridge. I want to read so I don't get this wrong. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I realize that under the Code of Massachusetts regulations pertaining to cable television, specifically 207 CMR 4.04, the standard of review, by this licensing authority is extremely narrow, as you stated. The only things you can consider regarding Comcast is management experience, technical experience, financial capability, and the legal ability to operate a cable system under the existing license. Nothing at this time can be done to amend or renegotiate the terms of the existing contract. It's therefore a foregone conclusion that this license transfer will take place. I mean, common sense will tell you that. <laughs> That being said, I believe that my question goes to the licensee's management experience, specifically how Comcast has increased its customer base. When I looked for the regulations guiding this hearing on the Massachusetts Office of Consumer Affairs and Business Regulations website, I also found a document showing the history of cable operation in the Commonwealth, and it's worth noting that in 1995, there were 21 cable providers. With the merger of Comcast with Time Warner and the swap with Charter, we're down to seven, and one of them is probably on life support. Now, getting specific to Southbridge, we started with Greater Media Cable, which then became Charter. For many of the years, from the beginning of cable TV in Southbridge to now, cable subscriptions have decreased while overall subscriptions to particular cable providers has increased because of consolidation. Here's my question to Comcast through you, Mr. Chairman, if they care to respond. Even though you will undoubtedly get the transfer of the license that you're seeking, what incentives have you routinely used to increase your number of subscribers other than through consolidation and swapping. In other words, does it matter to you whether Southbridge households subscribe to Com Comcast or not, as long as you get the license? And why should the citizens of Southbridge, the citizens, not the town, the individual citizens, choose to subscribe to Comcast instead of another available alternative? I think those are legitimate questions. 
<clears throat> fair questions, very fair questions. And it's really, I think it hinges on two things. One, the good provision of services through a customer service or application, um, as well as support through a technical <clears throat> reactive, reactive management. But even more so today, it's what's even a greater thing that, that most of the companies are doing to excel in maintaining the subscriber base as well as getting subscribers from other operators is providing robust services. That is to say, cable services that are second to none uh, with regards to new and innovative uh, practices and software that run in the background as well as in the forefront of our services and plethora of information and, and entertainment that one can get not only when it comes up on the you know the online channels, the direct line channels, but also on demand when you want to watch it. Um, now all of that comes with price. And all of that does actually um, need to be packaged in a manner that it is affordable. And I think that is the other piece that goes along with the value and the robustness of the services is that when we sell our services, and one of the ways that we really have excelled in competing is to sell services in a package that's affordable um, for folks that they can buy telephone, internet, and cable services, along with some of the other peripheral services, such as home security services that we now provide. And we all not only provide that on a residential basis, but to small medium businesses to also. Does that help? All yeah, yes, it does. I, I would just say as an analogy, if someone owned the only bus service in Southbridge by law, does it make any difference whether there's any riders? Oh, I, I think it certainly does. I mean, it, it's today, I mean, Charter it, it operates here and we compete um, with, with DirecTV and the DISH Network. Um, and, and if you look at it, those two satellite providers are the second and third largest video providers in the country. And that's not even considering Netflix, which is not bigger than all of us. Um, so the, the, the revenues um, certainly have options related to video services. And, and it's up to us and it's up to Comcast to provide the value to the customers so that they will choose us as opposed to their alternatives. It's not completely <coughs> on point to the hearing, but it's, it's compelling and interesting to me that <coughs> the competition is not so much now between cable providers as it is between cable providers over the air providers and now you know, when cable providers took business from the phone company, now the phone companies talking about doing cable. So, it's an interesting time to see where this competitive market will, you know, will, will go. One thing I think is fairly certain is um, the market economy being the market economy, competition will always be part of it. <clears throat> and it's certainly morphing because it started out completely non-competitive, became competitive. Community Island has two characters and it's fairly competitive. Um, and then it's now sort of morphing back into not competitive with cable, but very competitive with other other alternatives to get captured around internet service, uh, television service, and uh, phone. So it's fascinating where the market is going. Terrific elucidation of the law, by the way. I'm going to have you rewrite my opening statement if I have to do it. <laughs> Thank you. I just wanted to ask uh, how many years are left on the license? I'm sorry? How many years are left on the license? Um, 2000... 2021. So. Correct, 2021. Yeah. Seven more years? Yeah. Um, what was it? 15 year? 10 years. 10. 10 years. Okay. Great. Other questions, please. Ma'am? I think people in town, oh, I'm sorry, I'm watching Shea on 63 High Street. I think people in town would like to know when I sit down in my home, what will the change be for me? I know I read in the paper that uh, initially there will be very little change. But we know that we're a company with good management skills and good uh, technical skills comes in, there's going to be 
What what will it look like, perhaps, to the um, customers? Additional level? services, how um, cable channels. He talked a little bit about packages, <coughs> how that would. I know he can't tell us exactly how it would look, but basically, you know, once it gets up and running, how would my interface with Comcast, including maybe even customer service, um, actually impact the the, the customers in South? Yeah, I really, I really can't comment um, for a number of reasons. I'm going to give you a, a pat answer first and then kind of a, a different picture. Um, under this, these circumstances, Comcast, as the acquiring company, is very limited first to go into the operation of the current operator. Because first, first and foremost, we don't own or operate that, that system until the control has been changed. So we have made no plans to make any changes at all. We don't know. Like, you know, it's, a, it's an awkward statement to make, but there are no changes made or, or even plans to be uh, that are, are in the works right now because we, we really can't by law. I will say this, that um, those services and the, especially the customer service that we provide in our communities now that we are always striving to make better uh, will be emulated in the services in the area, uh, in not only in this area, but also in the entire uh, communities. That's about all I can say at this point without having any, any of the um, companies know all of the actual operations of the system. And Mr. Collins said the actual operations of the system. I think it's probably safe to say that, that whether it's Comcast or Charter or DirecTV or Dish Network, uh, the video program is pretty much the same. Um, there'll be there'll be differences in in uh, the on-demand program. I mean, we have uh, uh, an on-demand program we're proud of, and Comcast has one that's probably a little bit different. Um, we both offer a lot of free choices on that, and then it's similar to the pay per view. In terms of, of what you're watching on TV, I don't think there's going to be a lot of change. And there'll certainly be no time where, like the sixth question came up in the hearing the other night, is we're not going to shut off our system, wait a couple of days, and suddenly they start up there. There'll be a, a seamless transition and nobody will lose service. Okay, uh, can you offer any thoughts about the $64 question, which is going to be on everybody's mind, which is pricing? Because that's probably the one that people are concerned about more than anything. I think the only thing I can say at this point in time <coughs> is that nothing that is in, that is happening in this transfer of control will affect the prices in which the company will charge. Because you are required to literally step into charter shoes with respect to the conditions in the license. You're not allowed to alter that one other, no other way. Exactly. So whatever pricing could increase, on the charter, it can do so on the Comcast, subject to the law and the franchise agreement. And, and that's exactly, I'm glad you <coughs> mentioned that, that, you know, rates and prices change. Yes, they do go up, yes, they do go down. <coughs> Promotions change all the time. Um, so those things are really fungible and flexible <coughs> as one, the market dictates, and two, the regulatory landscape. In channel selection, what's in a basic pass package, what's in an advanced package, whatever, those sorts of things are not currently regulated, and that's strictly up to the carrier in terms of what those things will look like when you assume the license. The choices of programming, with the exception of the must carriers and those that are on the very basic of, of programming, if that's correct, it is really the choice of the operator. And the market determines that. And our, our subscribers determine that as much as uh, uh, even the cost of having to buy the, the services. Thank you. Other questions? Sir? Why don't you come right here to tell you I'd like to know when Comcast had happened, the next, next meeting we got asked to issues about cable service. We can't discuss it in this meeting, but we'll have to discuss it in the future. Why do you the next meeting with Sims can really discuss what they did for the dollar bill? That's all I can know. I, I think I had, the answer to that is we expect this transition to occur either by the end of the year or the first quarter of next year. I believe it's, uh, I'm 
So, well, the drop dead date for your own. 90 days is the maximum that the licensing authority can take. I would say, frankly, it would not be my intention um, to take anywhere near that, and I'll, I'll talk about that at the end of the hearing once I've closed the public well, portion. I'd just like to see if it's possible to set up an appointment now, uh, meeting date now so people of Savage can attend this meeting and know when they came to the park. And, and also express the pleasure of this place is about the service of you. And I know we can't go to this meeting, but there's no one next to the table meeting to take place. Well, we, if, if I may add, uh, uh, beyond the, uh, the approval here, uh, there are other approvals that must occur in the FCC as well as the Department of Just, Justice. If uh, anyone in this room were to try to, to guess when, when those would occur, uh, it would be very difficult to. Uh, likely, once the close of the, f after the filing, the 120 day period, which I think is October 16th, uh, uh, the DOJ, the Department of Justice, and the Federal Communications Commission will then take up the application at the federal level. Um, and we anticipate that's going to take three to six months, as it normally has in the past. So the deal will essentially be consummated at all government levels, we believe, by the end of the year or um, the first quarter of next year. So we're really not in the shoes of the operator until that, time, that happens. So the likely optimistic schedule would suggest Comcast would begin operations locally late into early spring, best case scenario. That would be my, yeah, where I sit right now. Where we sit. Other questions? <clears throat> All right. Hearing none, let me uh, close the public hearing portion. Um, it's my intention to take these comments um, uh, under, advise, under advisory uh, conditions and um, uh, close the public hearing portion of it, but maintain the record open for a period of 10 days so that if folks want to submit comments, they're allowed to do so. If people want to come in and take a look at the uh, materials that have been presented. These will be available um, in the town manager's office if anybody would like to examine it. Um, in the book right here, there'll be a bench copy and anybody would like to read as well. So, unfortunately, I don't have copies, so we probably won't be leaving the building, but it'll be available. Um, and if somebody does want to reproduce copy, we, I'm sorry, but it's 25 cents. A page we have to charge. Uh, so if anybody wants it, you're welcome to it. Um, <clears throat> so um, once the decision has been made, um, it'll be made uh, on the following basis. And I want to be just state these. Uh, these are the actual conditions as they will be read appear in the license um, once it is issued, assuming it is issued. And I will be required to find the following. Comcast has stipulated that it will assume and be bound by all of the license obligations in the existing cable license issued by the town to charter through the terms of said license, which expires on June 26, 2021. The approval if given will also be in reliance on Comcast's assuming charter's commitments as set forth in a renewal related side letter dated July 22, 2011. Further, that Comcast will have reasonably demonstrated management, technical, financial, and legal qualifications to operate the self bridge cable system, including but not limited to demonstrating a commitment to continuing to reasonably support local PEG access community television facilities and related facilities showing relevant management qualifications necessary for operating the self bridge cable system. That is the basis under which I will make my finding, if in fact it is favorable. Um, that's the basis on which it will be made, it's not favorable. Um, I do anticipate, um, barring any submission of any documentation, which frankly uh, could come in in the next few days, um, barring anything unusual being submitted that I, um, as licensing authority, I would be granting the license and issuing uh, the transfer uh, approval within that, um, probably on the 11th day following that 10-day period. I want to keep the record open. <coughs>
particularly because there's not very many people here tonight. I'm sure through the good offices of uh, local cable access to broadcast this. Folks can come in and look at this, and if they want to submit written testimony, they'll be able to do it. Um, and I think that's an important part of the public record, a good safeguard for you folks once the decision is made. Um, not wanting to be unreasonable, um, is that 10 days uh, of, of reasonable? Does that in any way interfere with uh, the business plan moving forward to provide for the citizens and self -care? Strictly your call, it's fine. We would, if, if there are comments, and if you want to look, we could uh, we will be happy to 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 both of us. Absolutely, no problem at all. And if, and you will maintain the right to respond to those in writing if you like to. And those any questions, comments, and responses will become part of the official record. And the videotape, <coughs> excuse me, the videotape will also become part of the official record. And. Um, Thanks for insisting that we do that, because that will make the record a little richer. Thanks. Didn't know we could do it, but I'm glad we've got it. All right, so uh, the hearing is closed, and thank you, everyone, uh, for your attendance tonight and your comments. Thanks.